All right, chemistry students, we are going to look at chapter 15, problems. So it wants us to write equilibrium expressions for the following reactions. Make sure the equations are balanced. So I looked at this and I said, okay, I've got one P on the left, one P on the right, three chlorines on the left, so I need three chlorines on the right. That gives me three H's plus six H's, that's nine H's on the right, so I need nine H's on the left. That gives me a three right there, three times three is nine, and three N's and three N's, so now we are balanced. Now to write our equilibrium expression. So we say K is equal to, we have our products over our reactants. So our products, and again remember we only want to write down our equilibrium expression only expresses concentration of gases and aqueous solutions, not solids or liquids. So everything's gaseous, which is great. So we're going to look at the concentration of P, N, H, 2, 3. That's a product. This is a product, H, C, L. So products over reactants, P, C, L, 3, and N, H, 3. Now we go back and the coefficients become the exponents. So HCl has raised to the power of 3, NH3 is raised to the power of 3, and both of the others with a coefficient of 1, that means that they just have an exponent of 1, which we can just neglect because that just is by itself. Okay, so there's number 1. Let's look at number 2. So I've got an Fe, one Fe on the left, one Fe on the right. I have three OHs on the right, so I need three OHs on the left. All right, so let's look at my K expression here. And again, it's products of a reactants, but I don't include solids, so I'm just gonna write one, All right? We do not include solids and liquids in our K expressions. So one over, the concentration of Fe plus 3, and that concentration of OH minus, and there's a 3 in front of the OH, so that means this OH is to the third power. Okay, let's move on to the third one. Balance this equation. I have three chlorines on the left, and there was one chlorine there, so I need two more chlorines. Two H's, that also gives me two H's. One O, one O, one LA, one LA. All right, so our K expression here, our products, but I'm not including the solids, so I'm just going to say HCl to the second power over, not including that solid, H2O, to the one, because there's a one in front of there. All right, the fourth one, I just balanced it. Let's look at this K constant. My products, notice there's a solid and a liquid, so neither of those are included in my K expression. Over, not including that solid, it's just going to be H2 to the fourth. Right, this next one, I balanced it. So this K expression, product, so concentration of H2O to the second power over reactants, don't, oh wait, this is a product as well, sorry. Um, N2 over reactants, so that's over one, so we can just leave that out. one. Notice they're all gases. So my products N2 H2 squared over N2 H4. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two says the equilibrium constant expression for a gas reaction is 
KC. So we're looking at the concentration of gases. We can also have equilibrium constant expression for gases in pressure. So we would be looking at atmospheres or millimeters of mercury instead of molarity, which is the concentration unit. And that would just be looking at pressure. So instead of CO2, if its concentration was in molarity, and it's shown in brackets, that's telling me concentration. But it could be written in partial pressures. So CO2 to the third, H2O to the fourth. So it would be pressure to the third, pressure of water to the fourth. And then the same for my uh, denominator. Now remember, it's products over reactants. So when I want to write my balanced chemical equation, this top part are the products. Well, when we write our chemical equation, the reactants are on the left. So I'm going to start with the denominator here, the bottom part. I'm going to write C3H8. And again, this is a gas. Plus, we have oxygen. And that 5 up there, remember, is the coefficient of it. And again, this is telling me it's a gas. And my products are on top. So that 3 tells me how many CO2s I have. And that 4 tells me how many waters I have. And I'm going to do a quick double check, make sure that that makes sense. 3 carbons on the left, 3 carbons on the right, 10 O's. And that's six O's plus four O's is 10. And that's eight hydrogens and that's eight hydrogens. So there's our balanced chemical reaction. Okay, moving on to number three. Consider the following equilibrium. We have nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas to give me NH3. We are given a 50 liter vessel that has one mole of N2, three moles of H2 and 0.5 moles of ammonia. In which direction, towards the reactants or towards the products, will the system shift to re-establish equilibrium of 400 degrees Celsius? And we're given the Kc for the reaction is 0.5. So, we are comparing Q versus K, and I want to show you a quick slide here to remind you the difference. Now looking at Q versus K, the reaction quotient is Q. It measures the relative amount of products and reactants present during a reaction at a particular point in time. The reaction quotient aids in figuring out which direction a reaction is likely to proceed. Now K describes the reaction at equilibrium. Q is the reaction that's not at equilibrium. And we know that calculating Q is just like calculating K. We put our products over our reactants raised to the power of whatever that coefficient is. So here's what we need to know and what we're going to use for this problem. If Q that we calculate is greater than K, the reaction favors the reactants. So the system shifts left towards the reactants. If Q is less than K, then the reaction favors the products, causing the system to shift to the right, to the products. If it's product favored, it's going to go towards the products, which is to the right. If Q is equal to K, then the reaction is already at equilibrium. So now let's set up number three. All right, so I took what I was given in number three. I wrote down my reaction. I was told that it was a 50 liter vessel. And remember, concentration is moles per liter. So I was told I had one mole of nitrogen in 50 liters, three moles of H2, two and 0.5 moles of NH3. So if I did 1 divided by 50, I got 0.02 molar. 3 divided by 50, 0.5 divided by 50. So I have the concentrations of each. And I was given Kc. All right, so now I'm going to set up my Q expression here. We know Q is products over reactants. My product is NH3, and I'm going to square it. So the concentration of NH3 squared over the reactants. My reactants were N2 to the power of 1 times H2 to the power of 3. So I'm going to plug in my values, my concentration values that we just found. Product, so 0.01 squared divided by 0.02 times 0.06 to the third power. And I get Q is equal to 23.1.
Now we need to compare Q versus K that we were given. Q, 23.1, is a lot bigger than 0.5. So therefore, remember that slide that we just looked at. Since Q is bigger than K, that means it's reactant favored. And reactants are on the left, so that means that this reaction is going to shift left. It is reactant favored. Now let's look at number four. We are given our equation here. We're given an equilibrium constant, and we are told the concentration of N2, O2, and NO. So I'm going to set this up and do my, again, Q is equal to my products over reactants. My products is NO. In a balanced reaction, there was a coefficient of 2, so it's squared. And both of my reactants had a coefficient of 1, so they're just N2 times O2. So I was given the concentration of NO is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 3. I'm going to square that. The concentration of N2 told me it was 0.5 mole, moles per liter, and that O2 was 0.25 moles per liter. So that gives me Q is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. Now it also told me KC, equilibrium constant for the formation of NO, is 4 times 10 to the negative 4. So, in this case, Q is less than K. So, therefore, it proceeds to the right, right? If Q is less than K, it's product favored. And the products are on the right. So it proceeds right, which means it's product favored. Number five, the equilibrium constant Kc equals 10.5 for the following reaction. We're given our equation here, our chemical equation, and we want to find the value of Kp. So what expression relates Kp and Kc? Well, Kp is equal to Kc times gas law constant R times temperature raised to the power of delta N. Delta N is the total moles of product minus the total moles of reactants. So let's look at this problem here. Total moles of product, I have one mole of product. And I have two moles of this reactant and one mole of that reactant. So there's three moles of reactants, one mole of product. So one minus three is equal to negative two. So this delta N is a negative two exponent. So let's plug in what we know. Kc, we were told, was 10.5. So 10.5, and then in, in parentheses, I don't, I did brackets, parentheses, our gas law constant, 0 0.082057 liters atmospheres per moles Kelvin. And delta T, we were given degrees Celsius, 227, so I added 273 to make it into Kelvin. And it's raised to the power of negative 2. And I should get a Kp of my, if I did my inside bracket part, 5.94 times 7 to the negative 4, and then times that by 10.5. So Kp should be 6.25 times 10 to the negative 3. Let's look at number 6 here. Number 6 gives me a reaction and it tells me Kc. Decide whether the reaction mixture is at equilibrium. If not, decide which direction the reaction should go. So I'm given the concentrations of the two reactants and the two products. So let's put it into our Q expression here. So I've got my products, my CS2 and my H2 to the fourth power over my reactants, CH4, my methane, plus H2S to the second power. So I'm going to plug in everything from A for my products over my reactants. Make sure you put in the correct numbers and the correct spots. And I got a Q value of 3.56. That's 3.56 versus 3.59. 3.56 is less than 3.59. So if QC is less than K, it's going to shift right to the products. 
Now, it's very, very close. It is, remember, if KC is equal to QC, then the reaction is at equilibrium. So we are very close to equilibrium with these numbers. Plugging in our values for letter B, these would be the concentrations. It's in the, the same QC equation. I got 5.13. Do the math, double check, make sure you get the same thing. And now we want to compare 5.13 to 3.59. And obviously 5.13 is greater than 3.59, so it's going to shift to the left towards the reactants. Moving on to seven, we have our chemical equation here, and we're told how many moles of each there are, oh, and we have an unknown amount of CH4 per liter at equilibrium. What is the concentration? And we're given the equilibrium constants 3.92. All right, so I'm going to write my balanced equation. I can then write my KC expression, products over reactants. And the only reactant that had a coefficient was H2 right here. So that 3 is telling me that that 3 is there. And I know that that KC is equal to 3.92. OK, so we know the concentration of CO, of H2, and of H2O. It told me that. Uh, we had 0.3 moles of CO per liter, 0.1 moles of H2 per liter, 0.02 moles of H2O per liter. So we know the concentration of 3, 1, 2, 3, and we know Kc. So now we only just have one unknown. We just need to solve for unknown. So I would solve my bottom. If I were you, I would solve my bottom number and then multiply that on both sides and then divide by what CH4 is attached to, 0.02. Check your math and see if you get a concentration for CH4 of 0 0.059, and that would be moles per liter, so capital M. Let's look at number eight. You place one mole of each, of H2 and I2, in a one liter flask. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations for the reactants and product. The value of Kc is 55.5, and here's our reaction. So I've got H2 plus I2 in equilibrium with two Hi, all gases. So we have one mole of each in a one liter flask. So one mole divided by one liter gives me a concentration of one. So we're going to look at my initial concentration for H2 is 1, I2 is 1, and our initial product, we have none, right? Right now we're given reactants. Now, we know that as we go towards equilibrium, we lose reactants, we gain products. So we lose reactant, we lose reactant, we gain product. And we don't just, we're losing one mole of H2, one mole of I2, and we're gaining two moles of product. So our, at equilibrium, we have one minus X for equilibrium. We have one minus X for I2. And at equilibrium, we have zero plus two X is two X. All right, now let's write our Kc expression here. We know that it's products over reactants. Just gonna say P over R. Our products is 2x. And remember, if I look back at my equation here, there's a two, so I have to square my product over my reactants. So I have one minus x times one minus x. So I'm just gonna write one minus x squared. I could just write, remember we know that our reactants are H2 times I2, right? So I could say one minus x, one minus x, and they're both raised to the power of one, but I'm gonna simplify this. One minus x times one minus x is one minus x squared. 
and that's equal to, we were told KC was 55.3. Okay, so let's solve for X. Well, first I want to get rid of these squares, make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to take the square root of both of these guys, which means I need to take the square root of that. So that leaves me with 2X over 1 minus X is equal to the square root of 55.3, I got 7.44. Okay, now let's reduce this, and we're going to say 2x, I'm going to pretend like this is over 1, right? So I'm going to cross multiply 2x times 1 is 2x is equal to, I'm going to say 7.44 times 1 minus x. Okay, now I need to distribute this. So 2x is equal to 7.44 times 1 is 7.44 minus 7.44x. All right, now I'm going to add 7.44x to both sides. So that gives me 9.44x on the left is equal to 7.44. Now to get x, I'm going to divide both sides by 9.44. I get x is equal to 0.7881. Now, we're getting close. I need to now plug this number into my equilibrium expressions to get those concentrations. Because it says, find, calculate the equilibrium concentrations for the reactants and the product. Okay, so our equilibrium for H2, remember we said it was 1 minus x. Okay, so let's do 1 minus 0.7881. And that should equal 0.21 molar. All right. Equilibrium concentration for I2 was the exact same, 1 minus X. So this concentration is for H2 and I2 concentrations. Let's calculate the equilibrium concentration for our product. Our product was 2X, so 2 times 0.7881 should give me a concentration of 1.58 molar for HI. All right, let's look at number nine. We're told that we have a sample of HI. It's placed in an empty, empty two liter container. And here is our equation. After the reads, the concentration of I2 was 6.29 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Calculate KC. Okay, let's write down what we know. We know that our initial concentration, that we had 9.3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of HI. So I'm going to write down 9.30 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of this, and it was in a 2 liter container. Okay, and we know initially I have no product, I have all reactants. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. Now, we lose reactant, we gain product. And I lose 2x, and I gain x, I gain x. So, I'm going to do 9.3 times the negative 3 divided by 2. That gives me 4.65 times 10 to the negative 3 molar, and we're going to minus 2x. That's my equilibrium concentration of my reactant and my product is X and X. Now, we were told, it said after equilibrium was reached, the concentration of I2, which is X, is 6.29 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Okay, so let's take our x and let's plug x in for this, for this, and for that so that we can write our Kc expression, which is products over reactants. So the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2 
all over the concentration of HI squared. So we know the concentration of I2 is 6.29 times 10 to the negative fourth. We know it's the same for H2. So 6.29 times 10 to the negative fourth. And now I'm going to plug in 4.65 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 2 times x. all together and then square that. So do your math, plug and chug, and tell me if you get Kc of 0 0.0344. Let's look at number 10. The equilibrium constant for this reaction equals 49. If 0.4 moles each of the phosphorus trichloride and chlorine are added to a 4 liter reaction vessel, what is the equilibrium composition of the mixture? Solve using the quadratic equation. Okay, so I've got our equation set up here. It says our initial concentration, we have 0.4 moles of the phosphorus trichloride in a 4 liter vessel of both. So what is 0.4 divided by 4 should be 0.1. And of course we have no product formed yet. And of course our change, we're going to lose x, lose x, and our product is going to gain x, a certain amount. All right, so at equilibrium we're going to have 0.1 minus x, 0.1 minus x, and x. Now remember, Kc is products over reactants. This is my product. These are my reactants. 0.1 minus x times 0.1 minus x is 0.1 minus x squared. All right. And that is equal to 49. So let's start solving. 49 is the same as 49 over 1. So I can say that x equals 0.1 minus x squared times 49. Okay, so now I need to expand upon this. I need to do 0.1 minus x times 0.1 minus x. So this is going to say x is equal to that would be, let's see here, x squared, because x times x is x squared, minus 0 0.1 times 0.1, so 0.20x plus 0.01, and that's times 49. Now let's distribute our 49. So I'm going to have x is equal to 49x squared minus 10.8x plus 49 is equal to 0. Oh. And I subtracted x from both sides, so that'll be 0. Here we go. Okay, so now we're in my, this is my a, this is my b, this is my c, so I can plug it into the quadratic equation. And hopefully you have that program in your calculator. If not, do a quick Google search for quadratic equation and you should be able to plug in your A, your B, your C, and you'll get two values for X. It'll tell you that X is equal to either 0 0.157 or 0 0.06389. And how do we tell which one it is? Well, I started with an initial concentration of 0.1 for both of my reactants. So my, at equilibrium, it's going to be 0.1 minus a certain amount. It can't be 0.15 because 0.1 minus 0.15 would be a negative number. So it, it can't be this guy. It's got to be the 
0.06389 molar so that we don't have a negative concentration. So then I just have to plug this into the x and do 0.1 minus 0 0.06389. So that gives me equilibrium concentration of PCL3 of 0 0.0361. And we know that PCL3 and Cl2 will be the same concentration. And then the concentration of PCL5 is X. And we said that X was 0 0.063, let's round that to 9. I think we had three sig figs. So that would be my concentration of PCL5. We are almost done. We're on number 11. We're told that the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay. We want to calculate the equilibrium concentration with 1 mole of N2. So 1 mole of N2 is mixed with 3 moles of H2 in a 2 liter vessel. So 2 liters, so our concentration 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 molar for N2, and 3 moles divided by 2 liters is a concentration of 1.5 moles molar. And again, I have no product. So my concentration, I have 0.5 molar of N2, 1.5 molar of H2, 0 of product. And we are given that Kc, again Kc is products over reactants, our expression, our product, NH3 is squared, H2 is cubed, and we have this as our Kc. Now one thing that we're going to take into consideration, this Kc is very small. 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3 would be 0 0.00159. That is a small number. So K is way less than 1. And we're going to put into effect an assumption we can make off of this very small number here in just a minute. But let's do our ice table here. So our change, obviously, we're going to lose x. Here we're going to lose 3x because of this 3 coefficient. And over here we're going to gain 2x. So those coefficients come in handy there. So our equilibrium concentration would be 0.5 minus x. Oops, 0.5 minus x. Here I'm going to have 1.5 minus 3x, and here I just have 2x. Okay, now let's set up our Kc. So any, the concentration of NH3, so we're going to say 2x squared over N2, which is 0.5 minus x times H2 which is 1.5 minus 3x cubed. And that's equal to 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, this assumption, we can say that since k is so much smaller than 1, 100 times k, so one take this number times it by 100 is 0.159. It's substantially smaller than the initial concentration is it is 0.159 substantially smaller than our initial concentration of either reactants yes so I can neglect this minusing x and minusing 3x because if I have a 0.5 minus 0 0.00159 it's, it's negligible. Even if I times this number by 3, 1.5 minus a super tiny number, negligible. So we're able to cross those guys out. Now, I'm going to rewrite this and say 2x squared over 0 0.5 times 1.5, I still need to cube it, 
and that's equal to 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3. So let's reduce this. I'm going to say 2x squared is equal to 0.5 times 1.5 cubed times 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3. And I'm just going to do it on my calculator here. 0.5 times 1.5 raised to the third power times 1.59 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, and I get 0 0.002683131. And we can't forget that that 2x squared, that squared needs to distribute, so that actually gives me 4x squared is equal to 0 0.002683131. So we'll divide both sides by 4, and then that'll cross that off, and then I need to square root my answer. So let's see what we get. 0 0.002683131 divided by 4, and then let's square root our answer. I should get 0 0.0259. So let's plug this x back into our equilibrium expression. So to find the concentration of N2, we said at equilibrium was 0.5 minus x. So let's do 0.5 minus 0 0.0259. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0259 gives me 0.4741. which again, we can see how small of a change that was going from 0.5 to 0 0.4741. That's why we were able to make that assumption back here. Um, and how many sig figs do we want for number 11? Looks like three. So I'm gonna just make that 474. For the concentration of H2, that was 1.5 minus 3x. So 1.5 minus three times 0 0.0259. Let's see what we get there. 1.5 minus, I'm going to do 3 times 0 0.0259. And I got 1.42. And then for NH3's concentration, we need to plug it into 2x. So 2 times 0 0.0259. We get a concentration of 0.052. Okay, two more left. Number 12 gives us the Kc for the following reaction. So we know the Kc. We're given this reaction. We want to calculate the equilibrium of H2S when 0.393 moles of this solid is introduced into a one liter vessel. Well, I wrote down our equation here. We were given how much solid, but I don't care. Now, I don't mean that to sound bad, but it's a solid. So we don't deal with solids in our equilibrium expressions. So I initially have a certain amount of solid and I have no product. So again, I don't care about the change, but I will have product being created. Again, I don't have anything to do with this equilibrium for a solid. So I have X amount of product, of both products being created. If I write my Kc, again, it's products over reactants. So concentration of NH3 times the concentration of H2S over, again, I don't include solids, so it would just be over one. So I can simplify this and I can say my Kc is 1.80 times 10 to the negative four is equal to X times X, because that's what these both are. So I can just say X squared. 
let's take the square root of it and x which is the concentration of each of the products so we can say x which is equal to H2S concentration and NH3's concentration is what's the square root of 1.80 times 10 to the negative 4 Um, I'll say 1.34 times 10 to the negative 2. Or if you just wanted to give it to me in decimal form like the calcul my calculator gave me, it was 0 0.0134. Okay, last question, number 13. All right, the last one. So here is our following reaction. When she introduced 3.57 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of N2, so my initial, I'm going to write down 3.57 times 10 to the negative 2. Now that's moles of N2, and it says into a 1 liter container. So moles divided by 1 would give me molarity. So that's my molarity of N2, initial concentration. And 5.15 times 10 to the negative 2 moles divided by 1 liter, so same number would be my concentration, of H2. So I have, again, initially no product. So let's find what our equilibrium expression would be. So I'm going to lose x, a certain amount of that. I'm going to lose 3x here and I'm going to gain 2x so my at equilibrium I'm going to have 3.57 times 10 to the negative 2 minus x for h2 I'm going to have 5.15 times 10 to the negative 2 minus 3x and for NH3 I'll have 2x okay now what else does it tell me she found the equilibrium concentration of NH3 was 2 or 5.92 times 10 to the negative fourth. So we know that 2x is equal to 5.92 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. Okay, we want to calculate the equilibrium constant. Well, if we know that 2x is equal to 5.92 times 10 to the negative, let's figure out what x is, because if we know x, we can put it into there and there, and we can solve for Kc. So I'm going to divide this by 2 to give me x. So 5.92 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 2. And I got 2.96 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. So we know that Kc is our products. So NH3 to the second power over reactants. So the concentration of N2 times the concentration of H2 cubed. Okay, so we need to have 2x squared, right? So I'm going to, we know our 2x is 5.94 times 10 to the negative 4. So I'll say... 5.92 times 10 to the negative 4 squared over N2, 3.57 times 10 to the negative 2. I'm just going to subtract x, make it not so long here. So I'm just going to say 3.57 times 10 to the negative 2 minus 2.96 times 10 to the negative 4th. And that gives me... 0.035404. Okay, now let's find out what H2 is and then we can cube it. So let's do 3 times x and then we'll do this minus that. 3 times 2.96 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so now 5.15 times 10 to the negative 2 minus that answer, because that would be minus 3x. All 
right? And then we need to take that and cube it to the third power. So 1.296 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now let's get our denominator. So we're going to times that by 0 0.035404. So my whole denominator, 4.59 times 10 to the negative 6, and my whole numerator, let's do 5.92 times 10 to the negative 4th. We're going to square that. Oops. Insert parenthesis 5.92. And we're going to square that. So that gives me 3.505 times 10 to the negative seventh divided by 4.59 times 10 to the negative six. And we should get a KC of 0 0.0, how many sig figs? Three, seven, six, four or you could say 7.64 times 10 to the negative two. Double check my math, double check that you get the same answer. And that is it for chapter 15 review problems.